Hey guys, in this video I would like to talk about power and torque and I would also like to compare a few engines from car manufacturers such as Audi and BMW. Now, before I will get in depth about power and torque and what influences them, I would like to tell you what represents power and what represents torque. Power represents work over time, which is joules over seconds, which is the so-called watt. In automotive, we will use kilowatt, which stands for 1000 watts, and the so-called horsepower, which has two values depending if they are metric or imperial. The metric horsepower has 736 watts and also a greater value to understand power and kilowatts. Um, one kilowatt is equivalent, at least in Europe, to 1.36 horsepower. And now, torque represents a force multiplied by a distance over an axis. It's a rotational force, so we have force over distance which is Newton or meters. And to exemplify that even better, let's say we have a point over here. Let's say we have a one meter bar and we apply at the end of it a force equal to one Newton. And this bar has a length of one meter. And the torque applied around this point is one Newton meter. That's how the engine actually works. It turns around an axis and that torque is transferred to the wheels. So that's how we measure power and that's how we measure torque. We use power and torque to determine the performance of an engine. And they strictly depend on key features such as the number of cylinders, engine displacement, the engine type, etc and they have different values at different RPM ranges. Now, what are the factors that influence both power and torque? Having more cylinders will increase both power and torque, especially at low revs. Compression ratio also contributes to increasing power and torque at the same time. Turbocharging and supercharging, as you may know, has a great influence on power and torque. Basically, you can increase the pressure within the turbo and the injection pressure and you can gain more horsepower and more torque. These are the key factors which influence both power and torque. But now let's get a little bit into detail. Now let's talk about what greatly influences torque. These three factors are strongly connected together and they strongly influence torque. If we have a large stroke, a large surface area of the piston, and let's say we have an inline 6 engine, we can significantly increase torque. In a modern Volvo engine, we have a 16 liters inline 6 engine. So we have a large surface area of the piston. It's a huge cylinder. If we have 6 cylinders with a total displacement of 16 liters, and the stroke is also very large, it's around 140 millimeters, which is pretty high compared to modern passenger cars. A passenger car has around 80 millimeters compared to 140 millimeters in Volvo trucks. And this engine with a 16 liter displacement and an inline six configuration has a total torque of around 3,500 newton meters, which is insane. That's why they can pull so much weight. And again, this will impact, and again, this will have a large impact on the RPM. If we have a large stroke in a large engine, RPM will go down. This engine will be drivable between 500 and 2,500 RPM. A passenger car is drivable, even a diesel engine, is drivable from 1000 to, to 4500 RPM. So it's 
a big difference. The ultimate goal in a truck is to increase torque and to reduce fuel consumption in order to pull as much weight as possible. That's the main purpose of torque, to pull as much as you can. Now, at the other side of the tunnel, we have power. To significantly increase power, we also need a large number of cylinders, a huge compression ratio, triple charging if possible, and a large engine. Another great influencer for power is having a large number of RPM. That's why F1 cars are capable of having only a tiny 1.6 V6 engine which can develop around 600 or 700 horsepower, I don't know exactly. And they are capable of going over 18,000 18, RPM, which a passenger car can't reach this RPM. There are passenger cars in which we can go as high as 8,500 8, RPM in a Ferrari, a BMW M3, a Lamborghini, etc. But again, RPM is strictly connected to stroke. If we need to go as fast as 8,500 RPM, we need to have small cylinders with small strokes. If we have an engine, let's say a 4 liter V8 compared to an 8.3 liter V10, which we can find in the Dutch Viper. The 4 liter V8 with a small stroke, I think it has around 80 millimeters, if I'm not wrong, can go as fast as 8,000 and 250 rpm that's where the rev limiter is in a bmw m3 e92 in the dodge viper the maximum rpm is around 6500 rpm because the cylinders are too large and the inertia of the pistons is too high to go faster than this engine speed and now I will go into detail by comparing two engines from BMW. Now I would like to make a great comparison between two engines from BMW. We have a 32i E36 which has a 2 liter naturally aspirated inline 6 engine compared to a 32i E90 inline 4 naturally aspirated gasoline engine. Both engines have 150 horsepower and they have a few different factors. Uh, the inline 6 has less torque, 190 Nm compared to 200 Nm, uh, but let's see why this happens. As you can see here, uh, the inline 6 reaches power slightly faster at 5900 rpm compared to 6200 rpm, and that's because we have more cylinders and a smaller stroke. At the other side, at the inline 4, we have a larger area of the pistons. We have two pistons less compared to the inline 6, so obviously we have a larger surface area of the piston and we have a larger stroke, 90 mm compared to 66. As I said earlier, stroke and the surface of the pistons have a large impact on torque. So the result is that we have 10 extra newton meters and we all have the result is that we have 10 extra newton meters and the maximum torque output is reached earlier compared to the inline 6. The result is that we have 10 extra newton meters and we reach the maximum torque output earlier, 3900 rpm compared to 4200 rpm. We also have a larger compression ratio in the inline 6 compared to the 10.5 compression ratio in the inline 4. So these are the differences between two engines with the same power output but different engine layouts. An inline 6 with a small stroke and an inline 4 with a larger stroke. And again, power is meant to go fast, torque is meant to pull. On the left side we have a 3.2 naturally aspirated V6 engine with 265 
horsepower and 330 newton meters of torque. And on the same image, we have marked with red a 2 liter turbocharged inline 4 gasoline engine which has 240 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque. If you take a closer look, the inline 4 reaches peak torque faster than the V6. However, the V6 maintains peak torque longer compared to the inline 4 and it also has more power. On the right, you can see the specifications of an older generation 2 liter TFSI engine from Audi, mainly used on the A3 and A4 between 2004 and 2012. I would say that the perfect combination for an engine is having a 2 liter turbocharged engine. You can reach torque much faster compared to a naturally aspirated one and you can have greater power outputs. Also the 2 liter is the perfect balance between costs, fuel consumption and performance. You could have a 2 liter turbocharged diesel engine with 190 horsepower and around 350 Nm meters of torque and you could also have a 2 liter turbocharged gasoline engine with over 200 horsepower and over 300 newton meters of torque. They're both capable of pulling significant loads such as a trailer and they're also both capable of going over 230 kilometers per hour, which is more than enough for the average driver. So these are the main differences between power, torque and factors. If you have any questions or anything else to add, feel free to write down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you haven't already for more car videos and how cars work and I'll talk to you guys soon.